bad people's personalities, awful people's personalities you've ever seen. I'm not gonna even sign up for that one. That's enough. Hello friends, welcome back to my channel. I hope that you are well. I hope you're keeping yourself well, both physically and mentally um, at the moment because it's very stressful, obviously. I don't wanna get too much into it because I want this to be a place where you can come to escape everything that's going on, but I just hope you're really taking care of yourself and um, taking all the precautions that you need to at the moment. Anyway, anyway. <laughs> Today I'm going to challenge myself and since I'm back with all my books, I wanted to ask you guys for a specific book recommendation requests that you want. Something you've always wanted to see more of in books, you've always wanted to read more of books like, but just struggle to find them. And I'm gonna see if I can tell you <laughs> any books that fill that recommendation. I don't know if I am, because I feel like I haven't read a lot compared to some people on here. I've only been reading a lot, really the past year and a half, so I'm scared. <laughs> I'm just gonna stand in the middle of the road, and if a car comes, I ain't gonna move. And if I can't come up with something, I'm just gonna try and recommend a book that fits that similar vibe, that gets as close to the request as I can. But this is either gonna go really well and be great and I'm gonna give you loads of recommendations I've never given you before, or on the flip side, <laughs> I'm gonna, you know, struggle to come up with recommendations. So let's just go and see. I'm gonna scroll and I'm gonna click one randomly. Okay. Oh, okay. So this is a bit, this is a bit, this is a bit easy um, in the sense that like, I feel like I've got a lot of scope to work with, but what I don't want to happen is that I give a book recommendation that I later want to rely on. So, okay. I'm going to have to think about that. But anyway, um, Rachel says, book for a mum with two kids who's tired as f uh, AF. Me. Okay, Rachel, let me think. Use your imagination. Okay. So I've come up with a recommendation. And I don't know if Rachel reads graphic novels, so I'm hoping this will still apply. But I think if you're tired and maybe struggling to read a lot, then graphic novels are a really great way to read more, <laughs> read stuff quicker and feel like you're reading quicker. And so then you do actually read quicker. Now, there's a graphic novel, which I'm sure we all think of, that I'm going to recommend. Right? I talk about it all the time. If you're a regular on the channel, there's a certain graphic novel series I talk about all the time. But I... I can imagine that I'm gonna want to recommend that later for a more specific recommendation. So for now, I have gone with Laura Dean Keeps Breaking Up With Me by Mariko Tamaki and Rosemary Valero O'Connell. This is a female-female romance graphic novel where our lead character, Freddie, who is the one here, is dating Laura Dean and like loves her um, in that kind of like adoration, obsession kind of way. But it's a very unhealthy relationship. Laura Dean keeps breaking up with her, keeps pushing her to the side. And uh, you feel for Freddie, you feel so much for them and you just want them to not be in that relationship. <laughs> I hate Laura Dean so much. But this really is a story about learning your self-worth and a story about friendship as well. I really love Freddie's friends in this. To me, they're like a real highlight of the book. And so I just think this is a really quick read. You can probably read it in a day, especially as most of us are stuck at home now. And I love the illustration style. To just give you a sense, I wanna find a page that really is like amazing. Okay, that's a nice page. So it's all in this color scheme of like black, gray and pink. So if I like flick through it, you can see that pink is on every page. Um, and it's just, I really enjoy when graphic novels have a really cohesive color scheme like this. I think Bloom is all blue. I haven't read that. I really want to though. I think this is great if you're tired and just want an easy read. So that's my first recommendation. Ah! Okay. I feel like this is going okay. Right. I'm going to scroll again. Oh, Karis, I hate you. This isn't part of the deal. This isn't fun. This isn't a challenge. Slow burn enemies to lovers with secret hidden unknown, secret slash hidden slash unknown identities like Renegades, but not Renegades. Can I recommend you Arch Enemies, the sequel to Renegades? <laughs> I don't think I read a lot of Enemies to Lovers. Hang on, I'm really trying to think. So Keris knows I love this, this series and it's a series I try to be quite vocal about. I'm constantly trying to recommend it. And some books I recommend and people go, okay, Megan, I'm gonna read that, like loads of you. When I did my murder mystery video, Loads of you said you'd read the guest list. Still haven't heard any opinions, but loads of you said you're gonna read the guest list, right? I speak about this series endlessly and still none of you are telling me that you're reading it. 
So like, what's the situation? So I've gone with Winter of the Witch by Catherine. R oh no, hang on. This is the last book. I'm holding it up because I don't have the first book with me. <laughs> Third bit. Oh my God, what is that? Oh my God. What is that? The Winter Night Trilogy, the first is The Bear and the Nightingale. This is the final one in the series. In fact, only really The Bear and the Nightingale fits this request. I don't want to give too much away, but the love interest in The Bear and the Nightingale, for a while, you are not completely sure of their identity, of what their, I don't want to give any spoilers, but what their identity encompasses, like truly who they are, and you're really not sure if you can trust them. They have a very, um, what's the word I'm looking for? It's just a very tenuous relationship to begin with. You're really not sure if the love interest is a person that you can trust and like, and I didn't really like the love, the relationship initially because, like, there's certain things that may be a bit iffy about it, like age, maybe? Anyway, um, <laughs> so if you don't know, this is a fantasy series set in old Russia where Vasya discovers, who's our lead character, discovers her kind of magical powers and she has to first save her town in the first book, then her city, and then this one she's trying to save the entire world. It's based a lot on old Russian folklore and when you read it, you feel like you're reading old Russian folklore. You feel like you're reading a, fan uh, a fairy tale, like someone's reading you a fairy tale. It is some of the best writing I've ever read and I really want to try and get to rereading it this year or maybe next year. I don't know. Maybe at the start of next year I'll reread it because I only finished it uh, summer of last year. So it's been about maybe seven months since I finished it and I already want to reread it. It's a bit of a weird recommendation. It doesn't quite fit it because you know Vassie's identity. She doesn't have a hidden identity, but um, the love interest is a bit of a weird one. It's a bit of a unique one. But in the end, I like it. By this book, I like it. Character driven and or slice of life with a mum character. What date is Christmas Day traditionally celebrated each year? Wednesday. Okay, when she said mum character, I don't know if she means a character that acts like a mum, like is caring in the friend group, or a mum, but she put like a face with heart emojis, as if like the mum is really kind and we love the mum, but in this book, the mum is a bit of an antagonist. Anyway, so uh, my recommendation is going to be The Poet X by Elizabeth Acevedo. I literally just read this. I didn't vlog it, I just needed something to read that wasn't very heavy at the time, and so I just kind of let myself not do it. As you probably noticed, I have missed a few Sunday uploads recently, but um, I don't know if anyone else is, but I'm struggling to read a lot with everything that's going on at the moment. I feel like I'm just about to get back into the groove of it, but I've been struggling a little bit if I'm honest. This in this we follow I think her name is pronounced Ziamara. I don't want to pronounce it wrong. Hang on let me look up how I pronounce it. Ziamara yeah I was right. So we follow her as she's kind of navigating her relationship with her family but her mother in particular. Um, her mother is extremely extremely religious and Ziamara kind of wants to explore life in New York a lot more. She wants to meet boys, she wants to have fun, and she wants to write poetry. She writes poetry every day, and the whole story um, is over quite a short space of time. So that's why I think it fits the slice of life uh, prompt. Not a lot happens, which is why it's very character driven. And the whole story, you've probably heard this, but the whole story is told through the poems she writes. So it's basically our look through her art at her life. And the mum is definitely a big character in this. And she and Ziamara have a very troubled relationship. Um, but it's the kind of troubled relationship where you kind of have to act like everything's fine and she's not really able to speak up to her mum that the relationship isn't working for her and is really controlling. I don't think it's the wholesome mum energy you wanted, but in terms of the words themselves that you gave me, it fits the prompt. Okay, last night, this is Meg. La hey, <laughs> oh, I took my neck then, I don't know if you heard. Last night, I really just wanted a book that featured a cute boy in a band, but not in a mega famous way. I don't know how random it is, but I couldn't find something that wasn't totally cringe for the life of me. So I haven't read a whole lot of like boys in bands <laughs> fiction, but the first one that comes to mind and it doesn't fit the not in a mega famous way because they are mega famous, but it was I Was Born For This by Alice Oseman. So I listened to this on audiobook. We follow 
essentially it's dual perspective one is Jimmy who is in a band and they're super famous and then we follow Angel who is a really big fan of the band and basically their paths intertwine in a really cool way Jimmy really struggles with anxiety and it's kind of him falling out of love with fame the whole story and Angel kind of learning not everything is what it seems when you love a boy band in the way that people love One Direction or love Five Seconds of Summer there's a lot maybe in those people's lives that isn't great and that is hidden from you and as a fan you sometimes try to ignore that. I love Alice Oseman, I love everything she writes and I really like the audiobooks for her novels so I'd recommend picking up like that. Okay so Nicole says adorable sibling relationship, siblings who would take a bullet for one another. In terms of ones I've recommended, The Bear and the Nightingale, I really like the sibling relationships in that. And The Poet X has a great sibling relationship as well. Oh, okay, sorry to keep recommending Alice Oseman, <laughs> but I didn't love Solitaire by Alice Oseman, but I think for me the highlight of that book was Tori, who is our protagonist, and Charlie, who is our, her brother. Their relationship, uh, as many of you know, Charlie is the protagonist in the Heartstopper uh, graphic novel series, and... Um, I definitely loved that a lot more than Solitaire. Solitaire wasn't great to me, but um, I think that the sibling relationship in that is really good. I've connected the two dots. You didn't connect shit, but... I've connected them. Some supernatural dark academia, new adult or adult, that is borderline horror and has an air of mystery, like a murder or a heist. A book like Ninth House or The Library of the Unwritten. Well, I just want to recommend Ninth House to you. I feel like... Everyone loves Dark Academia, but it's actually hardly any Dark Academia books, or at least books that are really popular. Okay, so this isn't necessarily, there's no academia in this, but I'm just going to say it. So Lock Every Door by Riley Sager. <laughs> this, in this book, we have an apartment sitter who stays, goes and stays at this old New York apartment. And for me, that's where kind of the Dark Academia vibe comes in, because the way that the apartment complex is is described with like all the gargoyles and the kind of architecture it has I think it's very similar vibe to dark academia in terms of the way it visualizes do you know what I mean I think that sort of architecture is the sign of kind of architecture I imagine in dark academia and so they just give me similar vibes in terms of the supernatural element I don't want to spoil anything but in this I guess one of the there's a lot of I don't want to spoil anything but there's because it's kind of tied into the ending. But there's a lot of theories for what is going on. And the supernatural one. Is it supernatural? I'm going to have a little bit of space, okay? Because in a minute, you might see a tear. Okay, yeah. I refreshed myself with what happens. And there are a lot of theories about what is going on. And a semi-supernatural one is one of the theories of what's going on. I'm not going to say anything more than that. Because I don't want to spoil anything. But... Essentially in this, apartment sitters keep going missing at the apartment that our lead character is staying at and you are not allowed to have anyone over to stay, you are not allowed to spend any nights away, stuff like that. It's a really weird situation that this girl's in, but she's poor, she needs the money, she needs a place to live and so she takes it. And it definitely seems too good to be true. And so even though it's not set, like in a school or in any kind of academia setting I think it definitely gives off that same dark vibes and it's a thriller so it's definitely got a really strong mystery element. So a few people are asking for time travel. Have I read any time travel stuff? This is just showing me how little I read. <laughs> so of all the people I know if she asked time travel Nicole asked time travel and there may be some dispute. Let's just be careful all my recommendations because I'm really stretching what you guys are saying. I'm going to recommend The Starless Sea by Erin Morganson, which many of you know was my second favourite book of last year. I adored it. I wouldn't say there's necessarily time travel. Like, uh, I don't want to anything. Intentional time travel, but the laws of time, especially more towards the end, start to bend. Um, and start to get very confusing. So I think if you're looking for a time travel book that is a bit all over the place, the people aren't turning their clocks and going, oh, I want to go back five days. Uh, you know what I mean? It's not that kind of thing. But the laws of time, the laws of reality, definitely start to bend. If you don't know, The Star of Sea is a story about... I, I have to give it in concepts, because there's an, I can't even describe the plot to you, but um, a, a man... A boy, 
<laughs> somewhere in between, Zachary finds a book that uh, one part of it actually describes part of his life in great detail and he doesn't understand how anyone could have known that could happen. He was the only one who knew it had happened and he soon gets sucked into this underground world of libraries and cats and the Starless Sea and... ah. You don't have to shout! Are in custody. Like Why are you shouting at me? Tangled Stories and it's so good. This book is a bit of a mind mess up. I was gonna say something else, but it's, you know, it messes with your brain a bit, but it's just so good. Someone said, I'm sitting on the floor. A slow book with an interesting concept, but little romance. I'm just gonna say a secret history. Just read it. Just read the secret history. I don't even just say anything other than that. Cause I speak about this book every bloody week, but it's my favorite book ever. I'm hoping to reread it soon and it's incredible and it's messed up and it's got a murder between friends and it's just the best look at people's personalities, bad people's personalities, awful people's personalities you've ever seen. I'm not gonna even stand up for that one. That's enough. Why does everyone say enemies to lovers? Oh, okay, someone else said a book that weaves books, cozy, beautiful writing, lovely characters, an amazing story, all into one perfect reading experience. You have just summed up the style of sea as well. So, go read it! I mean, honestly, honestly, the fact that people still haven't read this book, things like the secret history I can excuse because it's been out forever, and like, if you're not interested in it, you're probably not gonna be interested in it. But the style of sea, like, guys, this is, we're all in self-isolation right now, let's be honest, and this is the perfect book to just be in your pyjamas, light a candle, and just like feel the happiest you've ever felt. My guys, my guys, it is so good. And someone else said pirates, this is a pirate in it. The first line, let me give you the first line. If you've watched my first sentence video with Tom, you'll know. There is a pirate in the basement. Come on. And the next line is, the pirate is a metaphor, but also still a person. The basement could rightly be considered a dungeon. The pirate was placed here for numerous acts of piracy nature, considered criminal enough for punishment by those non-pirates who decide such things. Get out! Honestly, everyone else get out. There has never been a better beginning to a book. Get out. Get out. Someone said faith. Faith? Fame, grief, I mi mix those two words up. Fame, grief, romance in one incredible book. If that is what you're looking for, you probably have read it already, but I have to recommend The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo by Taylor Jenkins Reid. This is a wonderful book about this starlet and this amazing green dress, which I wish I owned, um, Evelyn Hugo, who is one of the most famous actresses, kind of of the whole old Hollywood um, 19 kind of, 50s to 80s period for her that was when her career spanned it's about the seven husbands that she had it takes you through all of them and in that way taking you through her life and you learn who her true love was and it has fame and it has grief and it has romance it has it all Taylor Jenkins Reid can write characters and in that way the grief and the romance just come out so strongly in the series I think her series is really play are like emotion led, not even character led. I think character led sometimes implies to me thoughts, motives, whereas this is all led by emotion and what people are feeling. If you're looking for fame in books, both both of her books are really good. Okay, and then Gabby said, a story taking place in a very remote location where they are cut off from the rest of the world. She said bonus points if it has magic paranormal elements, but sis, I don't read that that often. So, um, in terms of the rest, I just don't get bonus points. I have to recommend The Guest List by Lucy Foley. I just read this in my murder mystery video, which I will link. And boy, is this so good. This is a murder mystery. Um, there is a wedding on this very, very remote Irish island. It, no one has lived on the island um, for years and years, but now a couple have kind of done up the stately home and are hosting wedding events there. And uh, a super rich couple are having an event, a wedding there. And we find out at the beginning that a body has been found on the island. And so we switch between all of the members of the wedding party's POVs. Um, Everyone has kind of dark secrets and you are trying to work out who has been killed for most of the book. You don't know who's been killed. And then you're trying to work out who the murderer is. And it is so good. I think the remoteness of this location, it's something Lucy Foley seems to do in both of her 
um, kind of thrillers so far, her murder mysteries. It's very, very Agatha Christie and um, the remoteness just really kind of amplifies a lot of the character's decisions and uh, amplifies a lot of the emotions. And you will hate so many of these characters. I think something that's good about the guest list and something that the hunting party by Lucy Foley needed, I didn't like that one as much, is we have at least one character who's kind of our eyes into everything. Um, the plus one Hannah is very normal. And so you feel like you can trust what she's saying, but everyone else are mad. They are they are not good people, but um, I haven't read a book in a long time where I've not liked the people and been okay with it as much as I am in this. So yeah, if you're looking for a remote location, you can literally not get more remote, remote than this. And I want everyone to read this. A lot of you have said you're gonna read it. So like, that makes me so happy. I just wanna start hearing what you think. But yeah, I love the guest list. So I hope that some of those have been good recommendations. Let me know down below if you want another video like this. I would love to give you more specific recommendations. Just don't ask me for paranormal stuff again, because I don't read that. <laughs> I don't read anything paranormal. The only thing paranormal really is I've read is, is it Tunnel of Bones by V. E. Schwab? And I didn't even really like that. I am interested in reading more paranormal. I guess The Diviners is paranormal, but I don't think that fit any of the paranormal requests. So anyway, long story short, I hope I've done an okay job. Um, and yeah, let me know down below if you have any other book requests, book recommendations requests that you want because if you leave them down below I could use that for another video. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video and yeah, keep yourselves really, really well. I will see you very, very soon and keep well until then. Love you lots. Bye.